Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. Bonjour, madame et monsieur. Je m'appelle Jean Mer Jackson et je vais regarder une nouvelle vidéo de compétition de l'Indio. That was really hard and probably wrong. So, I don't know what the level is going to be in this new competition, but it looks like it is uh, from a, an event in France called Swing Family Festival. I think the video is Le Jacques et Gilles du Samedi au Swing Family Festival 2019. So, let's get right into this video. You guys know I love watching Lindy Hop just as much as I like dancing it and creating new moves. So I'm going to scrutinize this video and uh, tell you how I actually judge these dancers after watching it. Let's do it. And here we go. Okay, here we go. Uh, I don't see any familiar faces. So this could be a good surprise. Something new. Yes. Okay. I love Lindy Hop events. People get all dressed up in their best clothes. I love it. It's quite funny too, as a teacher, all I have is like really, really nice clothes or like Superman t-shirts. I don't really have a wardrobe that's in between. <laughs> so, let's see what happens with this one. Okay, first couple. <laughs> I saw that trombone hit. All right, number two. Number three. Come on, number four.
Come on, guys. I think this is the sixth couple. Yes. Oh, he's like right back at you, boy. In your face. I love when people do that, just not at me. <laughs> I'm loving the energy. They're just like, just get out there.
That was good. That was good. That was good. I loved that. Now, I, I didn't know any of those dancers. And for me, that is like Christmas morning. And you just don't know what you're going to get, you know? And as soon as the first couple went out, I knew it was going to be good. It doesn't, it doesn't really say uh, what the level is going to be for the competition. So when that first couple came out and they were just like hitting it, I thought, okay, I better pay attention. This is good. I, had, I was having a hard time watching and writing down all the stuff that I liked. This was a tough one to do. But typically where I start with these types of competitions, obviously you guys are knowing me by now. I, I look at three main categories. Um, and within these categories, there's a, there's a balance between the subjective elements of Lindy Hop and the objective points of Lindy Hop. And so I typically like to start with the objective parts that everybody must have to get into the top three of the competition. So at bare minimum, they have to have the control aspect. This is the part that many judges will say is technique um, or they'll say, you know, different things like they're, they they didn't have it together they were too wild uh, you know they didn't have enough control that's the word I like to use because what it simply means is can we see the Lindy Hop technique which is call and response and can we see it in a way where once the call happens the response can clearly happen without the call being a distraction or the the response being a distraction before the call, right? We want to simply see that order of something that starts and something that is completed. One body sharing energy at two different points. And so for me, that's the first thing I look at to try to pinpoint who my top three are. And this was good. This was a tight, tight race for that third position for me. And so in looking at both sets, uh, there were certain things that I really liked and there were other dancers that did certain things better when it came to control. But if I were to look at the totality of these dancers sets and to see which couple really emphasized control as their main asset more than anything else. And that couple for me was the follower. She had like gold on with the white collar, black pants. And gentlemen had like a black suit with a blue blue shirt. Lots of joy on their face. So much energy. In fact, they didn't do a whole lot of movements that were unfamiliar. And I liked them for that because I got a chance to see a little bit more of their personalities. I mean, he was swinging out with his partner. She was enjoying it. And they were like, let's do it again. <laughs> All right, let's keep doing it. And, and that, that part is the the joy part of the Jack and Jill experience that I look for in dancers and they had the control part down to where both of their energy levels were the same and I appreciated that I was always looking forward to seeing them again after their very first set and they actually matched the energy by the second set which was really really awesome so I don't know their names but for me if I was there present at this event um, it still would have been the same. They would have been my third place spot. Now, moving into the second place category, it's a little bit more difficult because now I can't just look at control. I've got to also assume that there are some other elements that are more subjective that I have to account for. And for me, I like to see the balance of what a dancer can do to the music. Now, obviously, there's different elements of what I mean to explain to the music, right? They're all dancing in the swing metronome, like the rhythm section. And they all, at some point, most of them were dancing to the phrasing of the music. Uh, and they were changing the, the fourth eight count. They were doing something at the end to let the audience know that they were going into something different, right? Or the phrasing of the music was going to change. And not everybody did that well, uh, some people were doing all their best moves as the phrase was building up. You know, it's like a hill. And I'm always looking to see which, which dancers can accentuate the top part of the music. That's where the, the drummer is about to show off a little bit to transition to get back to that one. And it starts building again. 
And so there was only a few dancers that were able to match that transition enough where I could really see what, what I was hearing. And that's really important to me. It's one thing to be able to like do fancy footwork and you know imitate what the saxophone player's doing uh, or pick out another soloist instrument. That's cool, but it's really hard to see. Unless the, they're extremely disciplined dancers, it's really hard to see and it's easy to become cluttered when there's a lot of movement that isn't properly placed in the phrasing to really get the best out of the movement. And so for me, one of the, the couples that had incredible control, I think they had the best control in the competition, but their, uh, there were some drawbacks on some things, but they had some incredible timing, which automatically made me put them in the second place. Uh, I would have put them in first place uh, if it weren't for the things that the other couple had that I have in first place. So this couple that I put in second place is the gentleman, he had like a gray suit. Uh, the follower had like, a, let's see, like tan and black. Yeah, she had like a black on with like tan. Let me double check. Yeah, that was them. She had like a tan. He's wearing all gray. It's kind of like a, maybe a purple shirt. He's got glasses. She's wearing tan shoes and all black. For me, they had some incredible transitions. The timing was great. Their control was the best for me. I did not see one point where, uh, actually I did. And this is why I had them in second. I did see this. This is why I had them in second. I take that back. What I saw best was the uh, timing elements of their dancing. They had control, like the third place person. They had it a little bit more uh, control than the third place couple for me. But the thing that put them in second was their timing. The timing was great. They were doing lots of moves together where there was a clear stop and there was a transition into a different move. Or they would do a basic uh, phrasing with some basic moves, a swing out, a tuck turn, some footwork in between and then they would do some big move towards the end of the phrasing and I could always see what they were doing and I could remember what the move was. That's important to me. And so that couple, they were second place. In fact, they had the best timing and they had some of the best, best uh, phrasing in that. So I was only looking at phrasing as timing. That's the main thing I look for, right? And so, that only leaves me with the other couple that I, I still think, yeah, thinking this over, not arguing with a bunch of other instructors what they thought. This is, this is my opinion. I like to put it out there for you guys so you know how I process uh, a lot of the subjective elements of judging a competition. The first place couple for me goes to the follower with the orange top and the black, uh, black pants and the gentleman that had the tan suit. And the reason is, it wasn't because they had incredible creativity. In fact, every, every uh, couple did moves that were done before, uh, and that wasn't a big surprise to me. They were able to nail the moves, which is not a big surprise to me. That just all goes into the category of control. Doesn't matter how hard it is or not. Uh, if it is a move that's been done and they can execute it, it's no different than doing a swing out to me. The one thing that makes it go higher is if they do something that hasn't been seen, and that's really, really hard to do. Um, and so this couple, what I liked about them is their energy levels were the same the whole time. I rarely saw the leader get too excited and move ahead of their partner. I would see him get excited, but she was also excited. I would see them try a different initiation and he would wait and the follower would follow through and I could actually pay attention to the out of the swing, <laughs> the swing out and I could see the follower moving through uh, that particular shape. So this couple had a balance of all three, right? Not one of them was just super high and the other two were weak, but they balanced all three well. And it would have been even more of a decisive win for me if they had some move that I hadn't seen. So that's a huge clue, guys. If you can just do something that may even be easy to execute, but it's unfamiliar, that can put you in a position in the judge's eyes that's so much better simply because you're taking risk with the technique, right? So control is third place, control and timing is second place, control, timing, and creativity or balance. If there's no creativity, I'm looking for balance of all three, right? That's, that's important to me.
So like I said, if you don't do a whole bunch of creativity and you do moves that are done before just a different way, or you just simply nail the moves, that's okay too. That's okay too, because this is partially craftsmanship and you have to be able to at least do the stuff that came before. So I can't knock everybody for not coming up with something unique, but I will tell you, if you do come up with something unique, that will set you apart by miles in a competition. Okay, so um, that's my top three guys. Big shout out to everybody else who put themselves out there. It's not easy doing a competition, especially if it was your first time. I remember my first time. I was nervous. It didn't look like I was nervous, but I was totally shaking. And uh, the audience, sometimes they're forgiving, sometimes they're not. But <laughs> we, <laughs> it's amazing that you guys are going to go out there and do your dancing and get it on video. And it's out there forever for people to see. So big shout out to you guys for even stepping out there to do it. So with that said, that's my opinion, you guys. That's the way I looked at this competition. Um, these dancers were fantastic. I encourage you to take a class from them if they're teachers. Get out there and check out this event next year. This was just a couple of weeks ago. This was in November, so I'm sure they're probably going to start their campaign uh, for uh, registrations here in another six months or so if they do the event again. But I encourage you, if you're watching Swing Dancing, this is like your first time to kind of be interested in it and you're online, step out of your comfort zone. You know, first you might want to take some lessons. You can find some people in your town. You can take some of my free lessons that are in the description below. There's like 20 to 30 free lessons to kind of give you an idea of what this is about. We basically simplify everything so you can at least discern how to fix yourself when you go out to social dance. But ultimately, you want to be able to take the knowledge that you have and process it on the social dance floor. When I was doing this, starting off, it was every hour of class had to equal two hours of social dancing. That's crazy. But really, it should be normal. That's how everything in life works. You learn a little bit and then you apply a lot. You make mistakes and correct them. You learn a little bit more, you apply a lot, so on and so on. And so if you really want to accelerate your learning curve, I encourage you guys to take classes and I encourage you to go process it by social dancing. It's really, really fun. And have a good time doing it because no matter what your level is, you're just going to always need to learn something new. If it isn't the objective part of Lindy Hop and you've mastered that, it's trying to figure out what you like and what your personality is and what your style is. And that's going to constantly change based on how you feel. So I encourage you, again, take class, get out there and social dance, compete, put yourself under pressure, and make sure you have a lot of fun. So with that said, guys, um, let me know what you thought about this competition in the comment section. I loved it. I thought the dancers are great. I don't know any of them. I'd love to meet them in real life or maybe run into them at a social dance. But let me know what you think. You might have a different opinion of who you thought should have won. With that said, if I don't see you online in one of my uh, classes, hopefully I will see you in the next reaction video. Have a great day. Take care.